After getting all the electrical tidied up, I installed the insulation and finished up the walls so my glass guy could get the door measured up and ordered. This process ended up taking about 7 weeks from order to install. The least insulated place in my sauna is definitely going to be the glass door and panel, which is another reason why I beefed up the insulation in all other walls. Hiding the beauty of the finished style heater and clear cedar lumber behind a wall was not something I wanted to do, even from the start of this project. I wanted to keep with the modern look, so I was happy to stumble across these vents. They're called Arai vents. Initially, I used cedar lumber to frame out the bench seats, but were not strong enough to hold two people per bench. I ended up using a standard wood stud to reinforce the seats. Not to have any nail heads or holes on the seat surfaces, I used a waterproof adhesive it's made by Schluter. To add the accent lighting under the bench seats, I used an aluminum channel, which I glued in place. The strip lighting comes with an adhesive backing, but with the heat and moisture, I don't think it would last that long without the channel to really hold it in place. I wanted my floors to have a white, shiny, gloss, marble look, but instead went with a matte tile, hoping it won't be as slick when it's wet. I installed two vents in my sauna. One is considered an intake vent, which is usually located at the bottom close to the heater itself, and the second one opposite from the first. I added wire mesh to my vents. I wouldn't want to have any uninvited guests in there with me while I'm in my most vulnerable state. In this video here, I'm installing the 9 kilowatt Hume sauna heater. I did end up switching it out for a 15 kilowatt heater instead. I'll go more into the details of why later on. The one you see me installing holds 300 pounds of rocks. The new 15 kilowatt heater that you will see later on in the video holds 500 pounds of rocks. So I ran into a small issue with the first sauna heater. It was a 9 kilowatt heater rated for a room of up to 530 cubic feet. Well, my sauna is only 350 cubic feet. I know what you're thinking, it should be more than enough for my sauna. Turns out, when they say cubic feet, they don't actually mean cubic feet. I figured something isn't right when it was taking my sauna heater 5 hours to max out at a mere 160 degrees. So after calling technical support, they told me based on their calculations, my sauna room is technically an adjusted 730 cubic feet and would need a much more powerful heater. So, they recommended me get one that's rated for at least a thousand cubic feet. Being new to sauna heaters, seems they need a new rating system, in my opinion. The one that they currently use seems a bit goofy to me. Anyways, buying a new heater was the easy part. The hard part was that this new heater needed much more power, and with more power, it needs more wires. But since all my walls were finished, I needed a new way to bring more wires in without demolishing anything. The answer here was to add conduit on the outside, instead of having the wires inside the walls. After a somewhat inconvenient hiccup, my new heater works great and reaches 200 degrees in about an hour, with a maximum of about 235. Usually I'm running it at about 190 when I'm in it. Hope you enjoyed watching my sauna build and there will be a part 3 coming out. I'm working on covering up the electrical boxes with possibly a table or rack. They'll hold some towels or something along those lines. The glass panel and door are an ultra clear glass with low iron, which has less of a green tone to it. This was installed by professionals while I was at work, so I do not have that footage. And that's it for now. See you next time.